Okay, in this section, I'm going to talk about where to worship, a house or a building. Okay, you want to start your own little church group. It's the people. They make up the church. But where do you worship? Sometimes you might not have a lot of room in your house. So should you try to get a building? Okay, now a lot of, a lot of uh, ministries will start out in a storefront. They'll rent a space. And uh, I did a little bit of research. You can do your own research on this. And just get online and you can look up storefronts and their prices, their monthly prices. And you can see here, I just got on Craigslist and, or Craigslist, and uh, we're talking, you know, I don't think that there are very many, if any of them, that are under $1,000 a month. Okay, that's a lot of money. That's a, that's a burden to put on a house church that's just getting started, $1,000 a month. And the sad thing about that is, uh, even if you wanted to do that, you need to compare it to what you would spend, what you could spend that money on, that $1,000. And right here, here we are uh, with some of our stock that we hand out, and here is approximately right around a thousand dollars worth of stock okay now let me ask you a question what do you think that that the Lord would rather have you spend your money on what is going to do more good eternally you spending a thousand dollars to get a church front you know or a storefront to have a little church in is that going to honor the Lord more or this material that I just showed you that can be handed out and given to people and distributed. See, buildings can be an incredible waste of money. Now, if you have a property and you have a barn or something on that property that you could convert into a place to meet with people, by all means, meet in a building that you have that's paid for. But don't go into debt. Don't get yourself buried financially. Okay, all you're going to be doing then is, is forcing yourself into a compromising situation where you have to stop speaking the truth to get the revenue up, to get the money up, to get the giving up. And that's not of the Lord. All right, watch out for that thing, that desire to be like everybody else. That's something else. If you have a problem with conforming to the world and you care about what people think of you, you're not going to get too far in the house church movement. Okay, you have to only care what the Bible says and what God thinks. That's also very important. What about a church building? Well, I did a little bit more research there too. And you can see here is one. This is a, just a small little church you can see there in the picture. But look at the price. $335,000. $335,000. You know, the Bible says that you're not to owe any man. Okay? How can you buy this thing without getting into debt? And this is a small one. I mean, I saw some on there that were over a million dollars. And this is how the Lord would have you spend your money. Think about one million dollars in tracts and Bibles. Think all that you could get done. Don't waste money on a building. But see, even if you would buy a building, think of what else you're going to have, your monthly expenses. You have mortgage, heat, air conditioning, electricity, ground maintenance, insurance, taxes, telephone service, furnishings, nursery items, toiletries, musical instruments, bulletins, offering plates, copy machine, communion supplies, repairs, carpet paint, in other words, teaching materials, cleaning supplies, and, and on and on and on. I mean, you could keep going there. A lot of churches have fellowship halls. They have full kitchens in them. You know, you have a um, prophet's chamber or missionary residence or something in a separate house. I mean, you can run up into the millions of dollars. And it places an extreme financial burden. And again, where is it at in the Scripture? Nowhere in the scripture do you see these things, all of these things there. So somebody says, well, I don't agree with the house church movement. I don't, you know, I don't, I think that this is wrong, but it's in the Bible. 
the Bible talks about people meeting in their houses, like I said in the sermon. Okay? You're not on shaky grounds when you start a house church. You are on scriptural grounds. When people have a church building that they're spending hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars even, when they're spending that, they are the ones on shaky grounds. Okay? They are the ones who are doing things that are unscriptural. They're the ones that are messing around with worldly techniques, not a house church. But now that, that brings up another issue. What about tithes and offering? Okay, the, the tithe is something that is not required in the New Testament where we are at. You're not to give out of necessity, as the Bible says, but I do believe that you should give something. Okay, I do think that it's a good practice to get into to give back to the Lord. So how do you handle that? Well, we started out, I'll show you this. We started out, I made this little cheap wooden box out in my wood shop. Just throw it together. It's just plywood stapled together. I painted it red. I put a little cross cut out there, uh, kind of like it's a sacrifice to give money. <laughs> and it is many times. But we would take dollar bills or 20s or whatever you wanted to put in, whatever you felt the Lord would have you put in here, and we put it in the slot. And I had this in a separate room. Don't pass around an offering plate, okay? It becomes a fleshly thing then, emulation, where you begin to show, look at me, I'm putting in my money. Don't mess with it, okay? Again, where are offering plates in the scriptures? They're not there. They did take collections for the poor saints at Jerusalem. That is in the Bible. But this thing of passing around an offering plate? No. What we did is we had this in... The room where, where we did our service was over there. I'll show this stuff a little bit later. And then where we had the offering box was in another room. Okay, out in the dining room, actually. And people would put money in it. They'd walk out there. Nobody was watching them. They'd put in whatever they felt like putting in, whatever the Lord led them to give. And then at the end of the month, we would count the money. And that way... You're not going to remember, okay, if, if you do it, if you count the money every week, then you can have people that, that know how much they put in and they can kind of figure out who's giving what. Well, we didn't want that, okay? So what we did is we counted at the end of the month. Now, we have since, from doing this, we have since abandoned this and now we just go with a system where we have a list of things to buy and the pastor and his wife are in control of that. And pretty much anybody that, that wants to give can go and they can purchase things, tracts, Bibles, books, DVDs, whatever, uh, items to give out. And you can do it that way. And as far as missionaries are concerned, you say, well, do you support missionaries? Well, again, we leave that up to the individual. If, we, if there are ministries or missionaries that you feel led to give to, then by all means... You do the giving, okay? It's between you and God. And there should be no pressure coming from the church, from the, from the pastor, asking you how much you're giving and all that other stuff. That shouldn't be in there. All right, so there are different ways to do the offering thing. You can use a box set up like this and pull the cash. And then at the end of the month, by the way, when you would count it, then you would all come together and you would say, okay, we have a meeting here. How many tracks do we need? How many door hanging bags do we need? How many blank DVDs to make things to hand out to people? And then we would take the money from the church treasury and somebody would put it into their account and do the ordering. That's how we used to do it. There are different ways to do it there. Again, there's really no set method. They took up a collection for the saints in the Bible and it was distrib distributed to them. Okay, there are poor Christians out there that you can help financially. Again, that's up to the individual, really. Unless we have, we have had church meetings where we know of somebody, a family that really needs some help financially, and we all agree to it. Okay, yes, yeah, send them money. And then we agree to the amount, and we'll send it to them. Okay, so there are different ways to do that. But avoid offering plates. Avoid anything that can become a fleshly show of it. 
But now I want to read a verse here from the Bible, uh, speaking of this thing of church buildings, of money issues. Titus 3.14 says, And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. 